I do. No, the bridge is Sterling Ridge. I, I maintain the bridge. Can't hear you, you're muted, Arie. Shalom, Boker Tov. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Tim. Good morning, Wendy. Good morning, Good morning. Rabbi. Hi, Tim. What's happening? Oh, not too much. <laughs> tell me about the, tell me about those, tell me about those two pictures in the back. Turn around, there's two pictures. Oh, and the pictures? Yeah. yeah. Um, the one is, uh, the big one over here with the blue around it, that's different buildings from Neshota Seminary, where I went to seminary. So the church and the chapel and the houses. Um, the other one is, uh, is a rood screen from the seminary that one of my seminary friends uh, drew. And the other one is the bell at the seminary. So that, that's my seminary wall right there. <laughs> uh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. I'm, I'm sitting in my kitchen. Are you? Well, this is where, and I usually have two candles behind me. This is where we've been doing the Zoom worship services on Sunday morning. With what church? Where are you now? At St. David's. St. David's. In where Lincoln. is it? Yeah. St. David's Lincoln. Hopefully in July, we'll get to go back to public gathering, but we'll see. It's an interesting time. Yeah, it is. Where's Wendy? Wendy? Wendy here, yes. You have any directions, instructions? You send a, a list of what you're gonna ask us. Just be you, <laughs> we'll be magical. <laughs> You know what? I would never script you. <laughs> I know better. You can, you can always try. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, effort and futility. Your best impromptu. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> uh, Shaquille. He should be he, coming. I spoke to him this morning. Wonderful. I don't see him yet. Well, I haven't seen him for, for ages. Right, isn't that fun that I chased him down? He's in California? Yeah. Yes. He's in California, he was in St. Louis, I think. Hmm. I haven't cut my hair for this occasion. Wow, I don't, that's a risk these days too. Yeah. Team, team Swipek did it. All right. He came, he I've been cutting through. David's and David cut mine. So this is like a, a new one of those like trust games. Yeah, yeah. We are definitely in a bubble with him and uh, Amy. That's and nice. So I heard uh, they made a decision not to have holidays at Temple Israel. I have heard they were leaning that way, um, but I don't think they've made that announcement. <coughs> Beth is, Beth L made that announcement. Yeah, I, I, I saw him on Zoom. Mm -hmm. As for now, I'm going to Kauai. Wow. Wow. They, they, didn't, they had the one case and that's it. So we'll see what happens. It's it's too far away, so we don't know. That'll be cool. Yeah, that's uh, the congregation I'm going uh, for the last few years. I went last year with Elise. This time I'm gonna go alone with uh, a friend, Mike. How is your wife? Everything okay? 
everything is wonderful. Yep, we've all stayed well so far. And, um, You're playing a lot of seeing the grandkids as often as we used to. You know, be able to have them here and hug and stuff. And they come out. We we do our social distancing in the garage, and we you know play outside and things like that. But it's been really hard on Nana. I'm sure. Yeah. Here he comes. Ah. Yay. I don't see him yet. Still getting connected to audio. Welcome. Hey. Good to see you, Shaquille. Good to see you. Shaquille, shalom. Salam alaikum. He's not hearing yet. Okay. Connected and still mute. Hi, Joni. Nice to see you. Hello. Hello, Joni. Hello, Hello, Gary. (laughs) Hi, Lisa. Hi, Ducky. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Joni. Hi, Arie. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, Shaquille is still muted. Good. Let's make sure we can hear him. Shaquille can hear him. Okay. Can you there hear him? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Salam alaikum. Alaikum assalam. How are you? Good to see you, Shaquille. Good to see oh, you. Good to see you again after a long, long, long time. <laughs> long time. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad our hair hasn't gotten gray since then. <laughs> Me <Mine> too. <laughs> Andy, how do, how do I open this uh, full screen? Because it's coming as a small... Uh... Um, I think in the bottom corner, you probably can drag the screen bigger or, or up at the oh, top, yeah. there's a green button. I just did that. Good. Great. I can see all of you. Are we okay. looking? Sorry, my light is very bright here, so. No, I'm... you look great. Okay, thank you. How is the family, Shaquille? Oh, good, doing good. Actually, my son uh, is finished with this help, so he got accepted a job in Sacramento, so we are near him and. I'm working from home these days, so I'm with him these days. And my younger son is finishing his uh, residency at uh, Cincinnati. So he'll move to West Coast after finishing his residency also, hopefully. Wonderful. In fact, today is his interview with UC Davis. Great. Great. So do you ever get back to Nebraska? Um, no, actually, I was since moving from... St. Louis to Tampa, Florida. Yeah. Couldn't. In fact, I sold my house remotely. My son was here all the time because he was going doing residency. He went to UNMC and doing residency there. So he stayed there four years after us leaving. Well, we expect you to be visiting us one of these days. When you yes, can. yes. I, I plan to really, especially, I, I can't wait to see the new center. Uh, mm. Wendy, Wendy will give you the date when you need to be here. Yeah, oh, really? well, our, our event is going to be virtual, REA, because in yeah. October we can't gather hundreds of people. So maybe in 2021 we'll, we'll find a reason to bring you here. Sure. What, when is the opening? What's the date? October 27th. Oh, Saturday, yeah. October 27th. Put it on my calendar. Please save it's the date. The, the 17th, right? October 17th. Yeah. 17th. Okay. Yeah. So people are still filing in. So we're going to wait. We'll start a few minutes after noon. Okay. <clears throat> for all you early arrivers, thank you for your patience. Sure. Thank you for arranging this. 
for me, it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> All right. Have you had your second cup of coffee? No, not yet. <laughs> My first cup about an hour ago. So. You look, you all look great. Hmm. Time has been good to many people here. Yeah. So, Rabbi, how's your son who was very young at that time when I was in Omaha? What's yeah, your... he's now 26 and he lives in Chicago. He's in Chicago? Oh, good. With a girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> very nice girlfriend. We like her. Really good. That's good. Good to know that. And how are your children, Mandy? My children are grown-ups too. I have a uh, 30, 28, and 25. Wow. And, uh, in this moment, everyone's uh, in Omaha. Or I have a daughter in Lincoln. Um, oh, one, and one is just visiting. Um, oh. But everyone's doing really well. Thank you for asking. Sure. Yeah, my daughter is in Seattle. So one of the reasons I moved here is so that I can close her to my granddaughters. So, uh, mm. Yeah. I don't have any grandbabies yet. I don't even have a grand dog. Oh, really? Okay. How about you, Tim? <clears throat> We're doing good. Our oldest son is uh, now a priest in the Episcopal Church. He's the rector of uh, Church of the Resurrection in Omaha, North Omaha. Oh, I see. And uh, yeah. they have three of our grandkids, and our other son, John, is in Lincoln and with his wife. So we're right in between them. So we get to see oh, them. Oh, I see. Right off. You're, you're close to your family. Yeah. That's good. Very blessed. Yeah. That's Very nice. Blessed. Those of you who are here are witnessing the magic of why this thing worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. About two more minutes. Because they're filing in. So how many we are expecting? Uh, we had about uh, over 50 um, register. Okay. Um, and there are over 40 here, here now. We usually get a, about two thirds of the people who register come and then like the rest of us, you register for a Zoom thing and then it falls off your radar and then we'll send out a recording and people will watch after also. So we'll... Nice. Um, we are recording this event uh, so oh, that yes. those who aren't able to make it in this exact uh, real time can uh, watch it later. Can I also get a recording of this later? Yeah, I will send it to everyone. Good. Good. All right. Um, so uh, I think uh, welcome to all. Um, in this moment, uh, I think the, the best practice is for us um, to all take a collective deep breath, um, right? And just feel in uh, to the um, grandeur of uh, the path that we have walked on together for uh, more than a decade. And um, to really honor that, um, we have been guided by something much larger than any one of us. And uh, how gracious we should all be um, to uh, come together on each occasion, even in the middle of uncertainty and chaos. Um, this experiment, this Petri dish that is happening at 132nd and Pacific Street, um, is divinely guided and uh, is a beacon of hope in a time where it's very hard to find that. Um, and uh, my prayer for all of us is that we lean into each other for strength and to know that it is creating this kind of inclusive environment 
um, that is exactly the work that the world needs. Um, our fearless visionaries um, have joined us today uh, to share their stories. It's a very interesting mix of people here of the 50 of us intimately gathered uh, on this Zoom call to uh, hear the stories. Some of you have heard the story. Um, I can't hear the story enough times. Um, and so we're gonna walk down memory lane uh, today and um, get a little bit of insight on um, how they remember the story. Um, maybe they'll remember it the same, maybe they'll remember it different, right? There's some urban legend uh, about uh, how we all remember and what we all remember. So I'll, I'll ask a lot of questions about that. Um, we have a tradition um, which started a long, long time ago about the order of operations. Um, we never knew who was going to go first and how we would ever keep track of equity around that. So we decided um, one of our very, very earliest decisions was whether it was writing it in print or deciding when we spoke at a civic group who would go first, we would always go in historical order. So we would always go Jewish, Christian, Muslim. Um, and today will be no different. Um, and so um, first I will um, invite uh, Rabbi Ari Azriel, um, without whom uh, we wouldn't be here having this conversation, um, to start us off by telling us um, about your part and Temple Israel's part in how this came to be. Um, give us your we have an hour, leave room for a few other people and a few other questions, but uh, get us started by giving us, you know, 30,000 foot. How'd this get started? Uh, thank you. What a wonderful uh, opportunity to be with uh, friends. We don't see each other very often and it's wonderful to, to be here together. Uh, thank you, Zoom. Um, I remember uh, a meeting in Shaquille Ahmad's house. I remember it because uh, I asked my wife, may her memory be a blessing, at least to, uh, I can't go to the house uh, without bringing something. And she made a honey cake and I brought it to your house, Shaquille. And uh, that, was, that was a wonderful meeting. And what I remember, there was a picture in your family room of the Hajj in May. And it was uh, something that I have never seen uh, close by. And it reminded me some of the pilgrimage that Jews have been doing to uh, Al-Quds or Jerusalem uh, for the special holidays. And it, I remember this and it left a mark on me. And uh, uh, it was a meeting of uh, I, I'm trying to remember who else. I know Bob Freeman was always there. Bob Freeman was always in those meetings. Uh, uh, and he offered always some of the wisdom that uh, he has, he possesses. Um, and we start talking there in your house. And then we went to a public uh, library. I, I'm trying to remember where was the library. Benson. I think it was in Benson. Benson, yeah, in Benson. Uh, and uh, we, found, we found a room in the Benson Library. We were still afraid of showing our faces in public. We didn't know how people will respond, people from the different faith communities. And so for a, a while, we went from uh, houses to libraries, and then we got the courage uh, to be able to meet publicly. Uh, and there was, a, there was a great opening for what we were able to accomplish and still trying to accomplish uh, for the tri -fate. That's what I remember. Thank you. Tim, can you tell us, um, maybe tell us a little bit, I, I'm not sure everyone here uh, is familiar with uh, you and your role. So give us a, an, an overview um, of how you got involved and why, and then um, some of what the Episcopal Diocese path was in this early journey. Sure. Yeah, I'm Father Tim Anderson. Um, I was, when this all began, I was serving as the canon to the ordinary in the Diocese of Nebraska, which means I was the assistant to the bishop. 
And um, I'll say this is my favorite story is I was sitting in my office uh, one uh, day in the summer of 2006, I believe it was, and my bishop, Bill Burnett, walked into my office and placed an envelope on my desk and said, I was wondering if you could do me a favor. I've got this letter from an attorney here in Omaha. He's a member of Temple Israel and he wants to visit with me. I'm going to be gone for two weeks. So I wondered if you could get a hold of him and maybe meet and see what he was uh, wanting to discuss with me. And I said, sure, no problem. So I tried to get a hold of Bob, Bob Freeman, um, and for a few days and I, I couldn't reach him. And finally he called me back and he said, I'm sorry. He says, I was over in Scotland. And I said, oh, what were you doing in Scotland? Were you playing golf? And he says, yes, that's why we went. And I said, oh, I'm going to like this guy already because I love playing golf. So anyway, Bob said, I told him the bishop was going to be gone. He said, well, yeah, I'd love to meet. And, and I said, well, why don't we? In fact, I think it was Bob says, well, why don't we just go play golf? And I said, that sounds like fun. So we did. And uh, that's how I met Bob. And by the sixth or seventh hole that we had played together, and Bob had started to share with me some of the conversations that Temple Israel had had with the Muslim community, uh, with Ahmed, with uh, Dr. Muhadeen, and uh, kind of just a glimpse of this dream. Um, it was just so exciting. We forgot we were even playing golf. I don't think we gave golf game much thought, but we have continued the tradition of trying to uh, get together each summer and play around the golf in memory of that first contact. So um, that's how the Episcopal Church got, got involved in this, because we were looking at that point in time uh, to try to find another property for a new start, a new parish. And so this fit into our plans. So that's my quick story of introduction. Thank you. Shaquille, thank you so much. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Shaquille was so involved um, at the at the early start when he was in Omaha, he's no longer in Omaha. So I'll ask you to tell about um, how you got involved in what was called AIISC at the time or, or became AIISC and now is the American Muslim Institute. It was the American uh, Institute of Islamic Studies and Culture. Culture, and culture, and culture. Yeah. We, we ultimately told them it was too many words for us all to remember. They needed to shorten it. Yeah, um, that was a, a a friendly critique at at yeah. some point in the in the yeah. decade, right? So so tell yeah. us your entry, some of um, what you remember about helping um, the Muslim community to be invited in and and further these discussions. Sure. Sure, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to this. And I begin with in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, and all the blessings and peace greetings to all his messenger, including the last final prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. So um, I was involved through Brother uh, Imam Lodi. When I came to Omaha in 1989, Imam Lodi was uh, Imam at the uh, Islamic Center. So when he was leaving in, in 1992 or 93 to Chicago, he pushed me to this because I was involved with masjid. So he said, you should uh, participate in drive or uh, interfaith activities. So through that, I used to come to Temple Israel since 1993. And I met Rabbi there for through interfaith uh, dialogues, uh, and presentation on Islamic faith to his, uh, his uh, community. And uh, same way I met Patrick McNamara through Methodist Church across from Temple Israel at that time. So he knew me, Rabbi knew me. So I think something come up that uh, I think Temple was planning to move. And I also knew that it's the Islamic center that was formed uh, very with a lot of hard work at the place where it was at the 72nd street so we were planning to move from there because it was getting small for our needs so there were talks of moving so they they knew that so they came to me that was the first meeting at my house to explore the possibility if it's possible and all that so i know from my community i'll meet some resistance and i was okay with that because i said those who want to participate because our religion tells us to, uh, to, just to talk about your faith 
uh, discuss the common things between the faiths, different faiths, including faith of people of the book, which means Jews and Christians. So we, we, with the inten that intention, uh, we wanted to explore the possibility. And I talked to many people in my community, a lot of people uh, like the idea, but, uh, but uh, was hesitant to participate. Some brave souls decided to participate with me. So there was a small number of people in the beginning. They started and some people, obviously they, they were happy where they were, so they didn't want to move. So I said, okay, if not, then, I mean, our community is growing. Maybe we can have uh, another center out West. Uh, some people blamed us for dividing the community also, but I, I didn't look at that dividing the community, but expanding the community. So with that idea, we discussed that our dream was one day we will have a big place, which we now have our, hopefully, thank God, our dream has fulfilled. We have a big piece of land where all three faiths, uh, places of worship are there. So that was my dream. So unfortunately, I have, because of my job situation, I had to leave Omaha in 2008, but I was still in touch until I think 2015. 14 or 13, I used to come. But after that, I went to Tampa and then to California, so I couldn't come as much as I wanted to. But I was really happy to see that the groundbreaking ceremony of Temple Israel, Islamic Center Mosque was opening there. And I've heard that Imam many times, uh, his prayers, his, his, uh, his uh, qirah or um, recitation of Quran. So, I'm very happy to see that all the centers are in place and our dream, that was our dream. And hopefully we used to discuss that one day, inshallah, God willing, this will happen all over the US and then all over the world. So that faiths can come together and we, we may have our differences uh, of opinions, but let's start with common things that we are common in. That's why God says in Quran, start with the common things that you have common so that you can come together at least. At least the people of faith, those who have faith, should come together in the name of our faith and the creator of all of us. Thank so you. My no, heart is not. still there in Omaha because I consider Omaha my hometown because that's mm -hmm. left, lived most of my life, even in my birth country, Pakistan. I didn't stay more than 10 years at one place because my father was in Pakistan Air Force, so we used to move a lot there too. So, oh thank my, you. 25 years. Thank you. Um, we'll, we'll come back to you. But um, so, so we have a healthy competition in the Goldberg house. Um, David was very, my husband, was very involved um, in the work in the 90s. Um, so before 9-11. So we often talk about the origin of the Tri-Faith Initiative being um, REA and Patrick and, and such as response to show up at the mosque. But the reality is the seed was planted a decade earlier um, and, and the trust started um, to build in the relationship between um, in so many examples, whether that's black Jewish dialogue at, at Temple or the conversations between the Muslim and, and Jewish community and then the, the, the deep relationships with the ecumenical community um, in Omaha, also with Temple, um, and, and a history of the, the founder of, of Tri-Faith Initiative, I'm sorry, of Temple Israel was Julius Mayer, who was in relationship with Standing Bear, right? So to, to be in relation with the religious other um, made a lot of sense for, for a Jewish leader. So Rabbi, tell us, um, what did you dream that Tri-Faith would become? Unmute. Magics of Zoom. There you go. Oh, sorry. Uh, what did I dream? Um, actually, uh, big parts of the dream are actually uh, there. Um, I. Uh, I definitely wanted us to, uh, in the beginning, 
I don't know if you remember, in the beginning, we actually had an idea that all of us will be in one building. The original idea was that there will be one building and all of us will function from that building. Uh, that, that dream uh, lasted, uh, I think, one hour, uh, maybe hour and a half. <laughs> uh, it was clear that it's not going to work. Um, different different uh, segments of the congregation were talking about education and how can we all do it from one building. Uh, this is still my nightmare. Uh, we have wonderful buildings, very functional. And uh, Wendy knows uh, the nightmare. The nightmare is that uh, all of us will remain in uh, the buildings and not be out to meet each other and to live next to each other and to breathe each other's soul. Um, that's what was important. The important was that we don't just segregate ourselves in our buildings and pray just with our people, but to allow for a mix and learning from each other and living with each other. Uh, as uh, Tim used to use the word intentionally, you, you said the word intentionally so many times in the board meetings, and that's exactly what was the purpose, intentionally to live next to each other. And by the way, having the campuses now build also forces us to try to work harder to understand each other. Where are, where are we going to go? We made a commitment to a land. We made a commitment to our people. And so it forces us to be able to touch some of the more difficult parts which still exist in our negotiation with each other. I like this. I like to live with that kind of tension. It's very healthy. Um, Tim, how about yeah, you? I, you know, well, I, I'd, I'd love you to speak to both um, the dream that you saw as a leader of uh, TriFaith, but also um, what it meant to step away from that dream. Yeah. Well, I mean, TriFaith for me has always uh, been about relationship. Um, our relationship with God and, our, and that trust in God and our relationship with each other and our trust in each other. And that very small group that that began meeting to discuss the possibilities and the dream. Um, that was what tied us together was this, I think this was this trust. Um, and one of the things I will remember always about our first couple of meetings, <clears throat> every time one of us began to speak, we would say, well, I'm sorry, but I don't know, know this, or I'm sorry, but can you tell me this? And finally, I think it was Rabbi, <laughs> He spoke, I'm just, okay, that's it. No more saying I'm sorry, it, which was wonderful because uh, that meant we were doing the right thing. We were, we were trying to come together to, to uh, um, grow in our knowledge and love of, of each other. Uh, and we didn't have to say sorry. But that was kind of important. Um, you know, our, our work with the Memorandum of Understanding, I think is still uh, something I will always be pleased with. Uh, and thankful for uh, that came out of that and and how we would expect to live with each other and, and um, interact with one another in our faith. Uh, that was important. Um, I think um, I, I may be more than some um, because I was involved with our national church uh, got to see the effect of of what we were doing in Omaha upon the rest of at least the Episcopal Church and uh, a, a lot of people around the country. And it was amazing. Uh, I think that our first uh, big event, Abraham's Tent, uh, was wonderful. We brought three leaders of our faith groups together and uh, we filled that arena that night. Um, and, and as I traveled around um, and as we traveled around together, I, I always loved it because when we went to talk about tri-faith, we always tried to have a member from each of the faith groups go to, to do the presentation. 
And I remember doing one for the, um, I, I think it was the National uh, Committee on, or uh, Convention on uh, Christian Unity. And it was wonderful to go and, and, and share our dream and share what was going on in Omaha with these three faith communities and the reactions that we would receive from, from people uh, across the country. And some said, well, what, you got to be kidding me. This, this can't happen. And we said, yeah, it can. So as we moved uh, through this project, I, like I said, our, our diocese was looking for a piece of land too. And I think that's the way this thing all started as though we thought all, we all needed a piece of land to build our buildings and why not get it together? We could share a parking lot, whatever. Uh, but we, we realized really quickly that, that was, there was much more to it than that. Uh, but as um, as we progressed through this, uh, it became um, pretty evident, even after we bought the land and shared in that, that uh, it may be more difficult for us to establish the new congregation and do there what we were hoping to do and be a part of that uh, initiative the way we would like to be a part of it. And we had a, a transition in our leadership at the, the diocese same time and Bishop Scott did a great job of leading us kind of through this transition um, but part of that was to say you know we need to we, we had reached out to the ELCA which again uh, this has been a blessing for us in the Episcopal Church because we became more ecumenical even with our brothers and sisters in Christ in this in this uh, state and, uh, and Bishop Moss and, and ELCA became involved but finally we, we we realized that we would probably not be able to uh, get our building up and running as soon as we wanted to. And uh, at the same time, we had heard that countryside may be needing to find a place too. And we reached out to uh, Eric Illness and the people there. And, and um, uh, th they have just been wonderful. Um, uh, th this was the most exciting thing, you know, any of us could be involved in, but, um, you know, God always has a plan. And um, not always what we plan, but in this instance, uh, it, was a, it was a beautiful thing that happened with Countryside being able to come in and uh, build their new building, be a part of this, uh, as, as we are still a part of it. And we have a lot of Episcopalians across the country who are very committed to this work and will continue to be. Thank you all. So I, I think this is an, an important time to note that while um, uh, the Nebraska Episcopal Diocese gave the uh, location of uh, the church uh, to Countryside Community Church and Countryside Community Church has um, joined the journey and, and a partner in um, incredible spirit and partnership. Um, the diocese has renewed their commitment uh, to the Tri-Faith Initiative by um, making a donation uh, which has been paid in full for a half a million dollars um, to help to build uh, the fourth building of the Tri-Faith Center. And um, in doing so, um, in the last month, um, they've helped us to finish um, our capital needs uh, for that fourth building and uh, with many other very generous donors. And um, they signal to us their intention uh, to stay on the journey with us, right? And so um, the board of Tri-Faith and uh, in very much in collaboration with Countryside um, and Temple and AMI um, are working on some documentation to think about um, what might it be to be an affiliate member of the Tri-Faith Initiative and how else might other organizations stand up for the values um, of the work that we're doing in a shared way. And so um, it is um, just their ongoing commitment is, is breathtaking. So thank you, Tim. Um, and we will continue to honor your uh, contributions. Um, Shaquille, could you tell us next um, about some of the, you, you spoke a bit to your dreams um, and, and certainly if you have to elaborate on that, but if, if there are things about your, your worries, um, what challenges you saw, uh, stumbling blocks that, that you experienced 
um, this hasn't been an, an, a journey without those. So are, are there those pieces that um, slowed us up uh, that you might tell the group? You're muted, one second here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. So there are a couple of big worries. One was uh, that we will be, I knew from the get go that we'll be blamed, that we are trying to divide the community. But uh, I will look at the, from the positive aspect that we will be enhancing the community, not dividing it. Second was uh, resources. Most of our community was new immigrants with limited resources. So we were worried about how to raise the funds. But luckily I talked to many people, uh, well-to-do people in the Muslim community, and they were all for it, including Dr. Sayyid Mohiuddin. I'm really thankful for him. It's his passion now. And uh, he, was in Omaha for longer than any of us were in Omaha, and he's a professional, thorough gentleman. So I'm glad he took the responsibilities even after I left. So in fact, he he worked a lot to raise the necessary funds and all that. So I'm glad to see that it happened and mosque is built. So our uh, dream was. Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, I was absent for that one hour when we discussed that we will be in the same building. But our thing was always that we will have three different places of worship managed by each um, uh, of them individually. But we will have a fourth center, which is interfaith center, where all three faiths can come together and take advantage of the proximity of each other <clears throat> and learn from each other. So we have still, a, life is a, daily learning experience so we can learn a lot from each other. I, when I read the story, uh, history of our prophet, he used to get together with rabbis in, uh, in uh, Medina, and also he used to invite St. Catherine's uh, Christians. In fact, there was a big um, uh, incident, or not incident, but there's a time when he invited the, the rabbi, uh, no, the priest, Christian priest from St. Catherine Monastery, and they stayed at the Mosque of Prophet in Medina. They were his guests. So, so there was, I knew this is going on, and, and of course it's confirmed by the commandment of God, which we believe is word of God, Quran, which says talk to the people, of, especially people of the book, and discuss the mutual, in, mutual commonality and start from there. So I knew we were doing the right thing, but like everything good, there is always some resistance, but it was not that much, but uh, we, on the way there, may, I knew there may be a lot of roadblocks or resistance, but thank God we all overcome them and we have to learn with that. I mean, live with that, learn to live with all the, our differences and even within our community differences of opinion. So, that's what we did, and that's why we were successful. So, can you hear me now? Okay, I can't hear you. Wendy, I can't hear you. Yes, sorry, sorry, okay. yes, you're good. sorry. Okay, okay. so one day I'll come to Omaha and visit the center. I'm very much good. dying to see that, so hopefully one day. Later. Good. Um, I think the reason that the uh, conversation about only one, in my recollection, the reason that the conversation about one building was, um, didn't last very long, um, had to do with the kitchen. Oh. And that as we started to talk about um, the, how we would all use the kitchen, um, it was a deal breaker. And, uh, and, and we just didn't think that was ever going to be something we were going to be able to navigate together. And we all knew food was going to be really important. Um, yeah. It continues to be true. It continues to be and, true. So, and food is for everybody. So I'm sure it's, uh, we can fight a lot on that. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Rabbi, um, I, I know better than to ask you what the problems were, but I think I can ask you what the challenges might have been. Um, tell us what, what was difficult about this um, and what was a path to overcome those challenges? 
uh, the challenges uh, were numerous. Um, uh, one, of, one of the moments that I remember vividly, uh, you were involved in it, which was uh, when there was a uh, fight in Gaza. And uh, we were asked to come up with uh, some kind of a statement and we wanted to create a statement of unity. And uh, uh, we were in my study uh, and uh, we wrote a document <laughs> that the next day was published in the World Herald. And uh, it was a, a document of uh, uh, understanding about how to relate to that incident and also thinking about the future. Um, so this, this has been uh, a challenge uh, and uh, it will be forever a challenge until some resolution is going to come about uh, for the Israeli-Palestinian dilemma. Um, and uh, sooner or later, we'll have to talk about this because we can't just uh, hide that challenge. Uh, I always uh, try to push toward uh, having a conversation about this. And uh, definitely there were times when I was uh, stopped by uh, leadership of the Tri-Faith tri uh, because maybe we were not ready yet. And so I believe that the, come, the time will come when it will be an open conversation uh, that will help all of us move from the infantile relationship we have to that problem, that challenge, into a more mature kind of a conversation that will help everyone around the table. Um, one way to come over uh, challenges is to continue being stubborn as I am, as you know, uh, and continue, continue with this, continue with the struggle. Uh, there's no way to avoid it. There will be a time for a reconciliation between Jews and Palestinians, Israelis and Palestinians, to be able to come to some kind of a solution. Because uh, I can definitely uh, share for a moment that the Trump plan for the Middle East is a disaster. Uh, I keep saying it, it will be a, a messy, messy kind of solution. And we need maybe to come up with more creative ways of trying to assist in the situation there. <laughs> Nasser El Sharif has a wonderful memory of that meeting. He was there. He was there. Um, he was a very important member of that conversation. Yes. So I, I invite you um, as we'll ask Tim that same question, but if you have questions that you'd like to add to the chat, we can um, come to that. Um, please, please start to offer them in the chat and, and I will call from them. Um, Tim, uh, what were some of the unique challenges um, from your perspective? Well, I think the, one of the greatest challenges, of course, for all of us was trying to um, become more aware and more informed and educated uh, about our, our faith partners' um, traditions, um, their, their writings, their, um, their way of worship. Uh, and I think we addressed, we tried to address a lot of those things by um, you know, attending uh, each other's high holy day services. Uh, and, and, you know, when, when one um, faith group was having a, a, a celebration, the other two would be there to um, pass out treats at the end of the celebration or whatever, just to, just to enter into their joy of that celebration. And, um, um, and that was a challenge to get people to understand that, that, that there was work to do. Um, you know, the, this wasn't a challenge, it was really a blessing, is we had some very committed um, uh, folks who uh, did a great job with our youth. You know, from the very littlest ones that would get together to, to the older uh, youth groups. And, you know, I mean, if we're gonna change the world, folks, it's gotta, you know, it's gonna have 
we have to continually be at it, but we have to work with our children as they grow up and, and, uh, and allow them to grow into these um, kind of relationships that, that I've experienced with my brothers and sisters in, in the other two faith groups. And so I hope Tri-Faith, if, if nothing else, will, will provide a, a center there uh, to continue to teach people about these three faiths. It will continue to allow them to gather uh, whether it's for the picnic or, or just educational things, um, that's going to be the work of, of the Tri-Faith Initiative. The initiative wasn't about the three buildings. Th those were about each one of us needing a, a place to congregate or each, you know, um, and, and but the Tri-Faith was about that fourth building. It was about that, how can we provide a way for um, people to, to um, come to know their neighbors? You know, and that was used to be one of our slogans, won't you be my neighbor? Uh, and uh, so I hope we'll, we'll keep that at, at the head of, the, of our pursuit here. Is there anything else? I don't know. I, the, the magic of my inbox found that uh, article that we wrote um, that was in the World Herald. It's in your, in your chat. Um, Great. Yeah, fun to revisit revisit that um yeah um so you know it's so interesting when you bring up the youth uh thinking about um Teresa Newell who's who just moved um and, and so she too had uh, such a long history of, of making all of these uh conversations happen um Shaquille how has your experience in Omaha informed um, the work that you've done in any of the other mosques that you've participated in since your time in Omaha. And unmute, unmute. What, you're muted. So wherever I go, I will talk to the, our friends, our imams at the masjid, and they will be very, I mean, happy to see that this is happening in all places uh, uh, like Nebraska. So they say it should be done everywhere. But um, and at, at when I was in St. Louis, there was a church down the road and there was a synagogue down the road and people used to come for tri faith there also for uh, uh, interfaith dialogue there as well. So this is going on everywhere with reasonable people. And uh, like, um, I remember a conversation with a Jewish congregation members said that uh, no matter what we do or you do, 25% people in my congregation will never want to do anything with Muslims. I said, you were talk talking 25% in my congregation, at least 50% people will do that. But it's our struggle, challenge uh, to do that. And uh, thank God, when we started to um, kind come together as a community at churches, at, at uh, synagogue, Temple Israel, 99% of the people's input was very positive. It was very good experience. So I said, yeah, you will learn only when you get involved. So you will get involved. Uh, so that, that will get rid of a lot of uh, misconceptions about each other. Unfortunately, uh, bad deed of very few people, few percentage of our community has created a bad name for everybody. So it's our responsibility to, to uh, let the people know that humanity know who we are and we are normal human being with inspirations like everybody else to have a good job, good, reasonable, decent living, living uh, with respect and honor. And our children get educated, get professional, that is all our desires. So this is common thing. We can start from there. Thank so, you. Uh, so what, another question in the chat box, um, perhaps, uh, Arya, you could speak to it first. Um, how did we come to the location at 132nd and Pacific Street? Um, well, actually, God is the one that had a big arrow on the location one night and we saw it. No, not really. Uh, we, this was uh, only one location from 36 other pieces of land that Temple Israel was uh, looking at. 
And I remember traveling to all those places. And uh, thank God, uh, there was uh, a country club that was bankrupt, uh, perfect. Uh, and uh, which gave me the idea that we need to continue finding bankrupt uh, country clubs and establish tri faith in on their place. Uh, I, I think that uh, it was, uh, some people are still upset. Some people uh, that used to play golf there reminds me from time to time that the temple sits on hole number 17, like I really care. Uh, but, but it's, you know, I participate in their sadness for not having it. But we definitely found a place where we uh, m make the conversation a lot holier because there is a lot less cursing on that land because people are not just searching for white balls, uh, which most of them are still found in the uh, small little creek that we have. Uh, it became a holy place. I think it's just a perfect place uh, for all of the four buildings to be on that location. Uh, the bridge that connects all of us is such a gift. Um, I, I sometimes, uh, <laughs> it's also less than a few steps away from my home. So I'm so lucky that it's so close to where I live. But I sometimes sneak at night and look at the lights of the bridge and it brings such happiness uh, to that place, such holy place. So those who are not familiar, uh, what was once Ironwood, uh, sorry, Highland Country Club Highland. that became Ironwood Country Club um, is part of their struggle to exist was a country club that was exclusively for Jewish people uh, because Jews were excluded from other country clubs. And in the 1970s, uh, a member of Temple Israel, Nick Newman, uh, tried to uh, petition to become a member of another country club in Omaha and was denied uh, because he was Jewish. And Warren Buffett responded by applying to become a member of Highland Country Club um, because he was not Jewish. And it got national attention and included the ADL um, uh, in its resolution and ultimately both gentlemen were or families were invited to belong to both and that was the beginning of um, the transition of the set uh, segregation religiously um, of country clubs. So the fact that that story is part of uh, the Tri-Faith Initiative's um, Memory. legacy, right, is very important. Um, and also that the creek that the balls are in um, is called Hell's Creek. It was always called Hell's Creek. We didn't change the name of it. Um, and now we have built Abraham's Bridge over Hell's Creek. Um, and so uh, what, an, what an interesting twist of turns. I, I was in Kearney speaking recently and someone came up and said, my balls are in that Hell's Creek. Um, <laughs> The, the next uh, question is, what do you feel is the, has had the strongest impact of Tri-Faith Initiative to date, both nationally and for you professionally? Um, we'll, we'll go back to you, Ari, and we'll go in order answering this one. Um, I think the, uh, the places and the times when we are mixed together and we are learning, uh, those are the highlights uh, for me the ability to teach and learn constantly, uh, teach and then learn from your students about their, their positions, their ideas, uh, it's fabulous. Uh, so the more education we have, uh, it will be a great success. People need to be less fearful and more accommodating with each other. Uh, I love the picnics, they're great. Mm. How about you, Tim? Well, just real quickly on that land thing, I don't think anybody, <clears throat> you know, most people don't realize how much time we spent looking for land and, and how many different places we thought we had found it. And then something right at the last moment would come in and, and take that away from us. And it goes back to that thing where God has a plan and um, we are so, I'm so thankful that we, Waited. We didn't get any of those other places because they wouldn't have been near the, the glorious place that we ended up 
that uh, there. And, and going back to Bob Freeman and I and our golf story, we said, hey, for he and I, this started on a golf course, and then now that relationship ended up building on a golf course. So that's okay. All right. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I am just so pleased when I go to the site, when I see um, information coming out of Tri-Faith, uh, your, your efforts of the staff and you, Wendy, um, and the board continue to uh, offer programs for people to to get to know each other. Um, uh, with COVID, I know we can't meet together, but you're still doing the Zoom meetings and, and those things. And when, the, when this is through and people can come to the center, um, I just think it's, it's going to be wonderful and have many opportunities to continue to help people um, grow in relationship with, with their God and, and with one another, their neighbor. Thank you. Shaquille, anything to add to that? Uh I think uh, I agree with whatever Rabbi and uh, Tim has said. And uh, I will just add that I think, uh, again, uh, mutual activities is a big uh, thing to bring us together, to realize our potentials and our aspirations that we are same, uh, we have same aspirations to raise families, educate our children, and have, have a unified uh, and peaceful life. So thank you. I remember at one time I, I can't um, be without mentioning, I mean, without mentioning that incident. I remember after 9-11 was Tuesday, and next Friday was, at that time, we didn't have full-time imam, so we were taking turns to do khutbah. So I was doing Friday sermon or khutbah at uh, Islamic Center of Omaha. And when I saw, I didn't know about that when I saw Rabbi Patrick McNamara and some Jewish community members, some Christian community members came up to show us solidarity with Muslim community. That was very uplifting. And to a lot of people, it was a big, big deal and meant a lot to us. So that's the- and Thank it, you for remembering that. Um, there's a question from Deborah in the chat box that asks about Dr. Uh, Syed Muhadin. Uh, uh, Syed was the uh, head of cardiology at Creighton. He is currently the president of uh, the American Muslim Institute, uh, at the founding president, and, and remains uh, to continue to be the president. He is um, on, the exec on the board and executive committee of the Tri-Faith Initiative. And unfortunately, he has a previous engagement every Thursday at noon. So that's why he uh, is not able to be on this call. But certainly as we celebrate um, our founders um, in, in the coming months um, and certainly in the tri -Pay Center, um, he will be uh, forever honored um, for his part. Um, Sharon's asking a question. Um, you notice many families in the neighborhood are enjoying the bridge and the garden and the orchard. Was that part of the original um, plan or is that a perk? Um, some Neighbors who were not always happy. Anybody remember any of them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got letters from them. Letters that were upset about uh, suddenly having all those strange things happening in their neighborhood. You know, one of the things I was the most pleased about and, and really proud of actually for Omaha, Nebraska was when we would go before the board and the commission and for our building project and in the, the uh, public hearings, I think we only had one person stand up and be a naysayer and the rest were very supportive. And, and, um, and I want to credit to a lot of the people from the Omaha World Herald that have always um, given us a, a great deal of good uh, publicity and, and information. So. I think we got to be thankful that we're doing this in Omaha, and maybe it's one of the only places it could happen. No, I believe it could happen other places. We I have to too. believe that's possible. So, so certainly a shout out to Mike, <laughs> Mike Kelly. Um, Mike's on the call today. Welcome, Mike. Um, yeah. Mike uh, is going to um, facilitate a conversation with me the last week in July about my journey from being a founding board member to being executive director, and I've um, invited Mike to. Uh, ask me those probing questions. Well, so um, make sure you tune in each, uh, each week um, in July. We have a different group um, who will join us. Uh, one week will be much about the, the building and construction and land acquisition team. Uh, countryside uh, representatives will have a week to tell us about uh, their journey. Um, and then the final week will be um, 
about my personal journey. Um, uh, let's see, there's, there's a few other questions. Um, I, I think, I'm sorry, I just want to finish the, the thing about Sharon. Sharon, one of the days that the neighbors were very upset were the day, was the day uh, that all the trees came down. Does anyone remember? Oh, yeah. That was that? Yeah. Um, we promised there would be more trees put back in than we took down. And I think, I think you accomplished that. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then uh, there's another question here um, about uh, how do you promote this in other parts of the United States? And, you know, I think um, when I asked about the dreams um, at the beginning, um, all of you alluded to that. But, but how do you see um, us uh, being a model, an example um, beyond Omaha? particularly in these divided times, is as it said. Are you? I think uh, we need to continue doing some of the panels that we have done in this area and move it outside of Nebraska. There is a need uh, to uh, maybe find places where there is already a conversation similar to ours and try to infuse them with courage and to suggest this, to have people come and visit our place and hopefully go back and do something similar uh, in uh, St. Louis or something similar in other places. Uh, I'm working now with uh, a friend, a rabbi in St. Louis in Share Emmet, uh, because he is very much interested in having this kind of relationship. And maybe it cannot happen always with buildings, but still it can happen in relationships. We just need to uh, be able to move from here and go and conquer the rest of the United States. Tim, this was so much part of your work. Can you speak to the influence that you've already had in helping this to matter in other places? Well, it was just an honor and a, and a, and a, and a privilege and a blessing. Um, it's been an important part of my ministry and will continue to be. Um, I just, uh, like I say, it's just blessing upon blessing because the relationships that I've been able to form, um, not only with uh, other Episcopalians and other Christians, but now with my Jewish and Muslim brothers and sisters, and uh, that's just something that you'll always have. So that's been the blessing for me. And I, and I, and I, I'm just so thankful of the work that's continuing to happen through your leadership and the rest of the board um, and all the communities. So keep up the good work. Thank you. Shaquille? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I think to answer that, uh, how can we, more that to other places is just, I think, as much publicity as we can give. I saw an article uh, once uh, in Omaha World Herald. It needs to be in other outside city papers as well and word of mouth. So when I have been to three places after leaving Omaha, St. Louis, Tampa, Florida, and Sacramento, uh, California, all three places have interfaith dialogue or, uh, yeah, not tri-faith particularly, but interfaith dialogue going on everywhere. So some places, big buildings are close by, some places people have to uh, commute, commute and discuss this. So as long as the discussion continues, I'm sure one day will, it will happen that people will realize that maybe we should come close. Just like in Omaha, we have a big piece of land where all three faiths are together, along with the fourth called Abraham's tent to discuss our common things and educate us uh, our common values. Thank you. So I'd like to give each of you a, a moment to have a final thought. Um, and I hope that you frame that thought um, in, in the perspective of there are 50 people on this call um, and Tri-Faith is, the initiative is the people, right? So what would be your directive? What's your action item? Um, to the people on the call who um, maybe are more or less involved to date. Um, what's your advice? What are your wishes? Um, 
Any final thoughts? Uh, again, REA. I, I think I would like uh, for every one of us, and so many of you are already involved, to continue deepen the relationship with the tri-trade. There's so much more that we can do. Uh, and so many more people that we can bring in. Uh, make a commitment uh, maybe this coming year, uh, even with the corona, uh, to be able to invite other people to interest them and bring them closer to the table. Uh, it's exciting on the table. Around the table, you have a banquet. Let's continue imagining that banquet. Yeah, I mean, mine would be similar. Just, uh, you know, thank you for your involvement. Uh, if you've been involved, if you haven't been, um, get involved because you're, you're missing a great opportunity of building some wonderful relationships. Um, so um, I would just say um, continue to spread the word and continue to support the ministry. Thank you. Shaquille. Yeah, I second and third of both of these gentlemen. Uh, I would add that maybe we should involve more, especially our children, so that the next generation is aware of this and they are more comfortable, I would say, or more for it. Uh, they have more desire to uh, get together together because they have to live together in the future. Uh, so they can hopefully they can instill this, this, these good values to their children and their children, so on and so forth. Amen. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, thank you all so much for your time and your love and your passion um, and your leadership. And uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, I will be sending out a recording of this and together with that recording will be a link to a survey. We would love your feedback um, on how this uh, hour went for you. Um, a particular welcome to those of you who have been um, with us today from places beyond Omaha. We really do appreciate that you uh, continue to stay connected with us. And um, next week, uh, again, I, I think I said John Walbaum and uh, Matt Herzog from Project Harmony, uh, not, Pro not Project Harmony, Project Advocates, and um, Matt, and who is the other that I'm missing? Um, Oh, Bob Freeman, um, are going to talk about uh, the, uh, the, the building and the acquisition of the land and all of those pieces. So, so join us again um, next week and uh, be safe, uh, make good choices, um, and thank you for joining us. Be well. Thank you. Hey, Wendy, thank, thank you, you for doing this. God bless you. Yeah. Wonderful. Take care. And please send me the, my, uh, at my hotmail all the information. I I will. In future conversations. Thank you. Thank you.